This is the Farmer King Now Heritage Trail. It's used by tens of thousands of people each year. And at first, it might look as a little more than an asphalt line running the length of the state. But there's a lot more to this trail than meets the eye. The story begins in 1822 when the state of Connecticut granted the Farmington Canal Company a charter to build. At the canal's groundbreaking ceremony in 1825, Governor Oliver Wolcott broke this shovel here, used to dig out the commemorative first shovel full of dirt. However, this bad luck didn't carry over to the rest of the construction, as it was completed in just three years, truly an engineering feat of the time. Here in New Haven, that feat is all thanks to William Lansing, a prominent African-American engineer who designed the city's slice of the canal. In September 2020, the Amistad Committee unveiled this bronze statue to commemorate his achievements. Unfortunately, Lanson's work is lost to history, as almost 200 years of development in New Haven meant the destruction of the canal. Of the 28 locks that once stood, only one remains, Lock 12 in Cheshire, Connecticut. This is Lock 12 here in Cheshire, Connecticut, and it stands as a great example of just how the boats would navigate the waterway. I talked to Ron Gagliardi, the executive director of the Raymond Beard Lock 12 Museum, to get the lowdown on the locks. In order to get to the next level, because the next level of the water is a little higher than this level, the water in the lock has to be raised. So in order for that to happen, those have to be closed, and then those have to be opened so that water can come in and fill. And that takes probably 10 or 15 minutes, and it's got to come up and then would just barge out of there. And you might think it takes some strong man to move these gates. But no, they're so delicately balanced that with the help of some leverage and maybe a tiny push from dad, even a kid can do it. Good job, ladies. The passengers could buy a ticket in New Haven and supposedly in 24 hours go through the entire length of the canal and end up in Massachusetts. The speed of transportation was the canal's main attraction, but constant flooding in the 1830s, followed by a drought in 1845, spelled the end for the canal. Investors pulled out, and it was closed for good in 1848. But just as one door closed, another opened. That same year, the New Haven and Northampton Company bought the land and began laying rail along the canal's towpath. For the next 150 years, the space would be used as a rail corridor. The canal line, as it was called, served as a vital transportation route for New England residents. Mergers gave way to more mergers until the line was eventually abandoned by Boston and Maine Railroad in the 1980s. Bruce Donald is the manager of the East Coast Greenway Alliance here in Southern Connecticut, which also puts him in charge of this Farmington Canal Heritage Trail. So I thought there was no one better to talk to to figure out just how it was built. And suddenly you had abandoned corridors like this. And so this was the low-hanging fruit, the easy place to build these trails because more often than not, they were purchased from the railroads by uh, the uh, state DOTs and uh, uh, they were in the public domain. So it's easy to build on them. The East Coast Greenway Alliance works with local and state governments to connect to the coastal states by a series of parks. Here in Connecticut, it has taken almost 35 years to get the canal trail to near completion. It was early on, it was about 15%, 15 to 18% done for a long time. Uh, and then uh, currently it is now uh, hovering right about 80% done. Of the 82 and a half miles of trail between New Haven and Northampton, only four towns are yet to complete their paths. The project is expected to finish in 2026 and the walking and biking public just can't wait. Uh, a high usage day, mid season in the summer, for a lot of these pieces of trail. So this would be at a counter, right? Uh, over 3,000. I sat down with Ron Goralski, the leader of Bike Walk Farmington, and he was able to tell me how this is not only a great place to exercise, but a great place to exercise safely. If you haven't ever been, if you haven't been active lately on a bicycle, then this is your best bet because you're not gonna fight traffic. Local biker Joe Colazzo agreed with Ron's sentiment. Uh, the canal trail is actually perfect for riding. I feel a lot safer on it rather than being on, you know, kind of the open road. If you are coming back into the world of uh, exercising, whether it's walking, cycling, rollerblading, where th there's no better place to rollerblade. The trail is self-policing meaning that local volunteers like Judy Orlando and Michaela Gay take the time to collect trash and keep the trail beautiful. 
trash picking. Picking up trash. We yep. have our trash picker upper so we don't have to touch the trash because that's so vile. You know, if there's like heavier things on the trail. Let's you know, hope a not. Lot of things, let's hope not. <laughs> you know, we have a trash bag inside Wet, of it. Wet, big, ugly things. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't want that. Just shy of Temple Street here in New Haven is where the trail ends, at least for now. As you can see, the construction is still ongoing behind me, but it plans to follow, instead of a canal here in New Haven, these rail tracks, which would take it all the way to the water's edge. And the public certainly isn't giving up on the trail either. Usage increased by 250% from 2019 to 2020, when the pandemic closed gyms and forced people to find another way to exercise. Some predicted a drop-off as restrictions lifted, but that hasn't been the case. Trail usage has remained steady, even increasing in some areas. 200 years later, this little canal towpath still finds ways to benefit the people of Connecticut.